Don Barnes here for Red Barnes Audio. And today we're going to do something called RX Basics from the beginning. And this comes out of a discussion in a Facebook group, an ACX group, about RX and the fact that people walk into it and if they don't have any background, it's like, what is this thing? And how, what's on the screen? And I, I don't get it. I just want some fundamentals, someone to start at the beginning. So I'm calling this part one. There may be a part two or part three, check the channel. But I'm going to talk about the basics, assuming you know nothing about RX, and open up the file the first time, and we'll talk about where things are, and a little bit about the interface, tools you can work with, and where to start when you go through your audio. So here we go, RX from the beginning, part one, check the channel to see if there's others. And if you have questions, be sure to join us in the group, it's group slash audio rescue on Facebook. When you first come into RX, of course, you're going to get this blank screen. And so obviously we'll run up to the file menu and choose open. And then we can select the files that we want to open. And I call that the hard way. Everybody does things the hard way to begin with. If you go out to the finder, if you go out to Windows Explorer and you find the files that you want, you can simply grab them and you can drag them in and you drop them. And then it'll open them and it'll open each one of those in their own tab. Now, when it first opens, it does something very interesting it shows the complete file. So that can confuse people. Matter of fact, if it's the first time you've opened it, because I've been doing other things, here's how, here's how it will look exactly. You're gonna have this blue over this cyan, and you can say, what the heck is all this? Well, it's two views combined into one, and later, as you become more advanced, this can be very handy to do this. Every once in a while, I'll use both, but most of the time, I'm gonna use one or the other, and if you come from another audio program, and you've seen audio, it usually looks like this. But this is still so zoomed in. You have 20 minutes of audio there. So the first thing you need to learn about this is at the very top, we have an overview. This will always be there no matter what you're looking at. And here's a single track mono based on the same thing we would use for narration for most people. If you're doing stereo and you have two tracks, then this file here is in stereo. And you can see the two tracks. And when you look at the overview at the top here, you can see both tracks are right there so you can see all the audio from beginning to end. Now notice that this file down here in the timeline, this is the timeline from zero over here to roughly, we're just gonna call that four minutes. When I move over to this one, this is going to be zero. And at this end, this is 20 minutes of audio, but we're really zoomed in. Now, most of the time I'm working instead in this thing that we call a spectrogram. I'm gonna switch all the way over to that and then it work in this view. Now you can drag these back and forth. As you get more advanced, there are times where you want to have both displays working and you can decide how much of each displays. But frankly, 95% oh, of the time, I'm sitting over here and only showing the waveform view. It's a lot easier to work with, especially if you're digging out sounds, but you do need to learn to zoom in. If I move, this is called the playhead or the cursor, either one, we can interchange those, playhead or cursor. Some of the documentation does say, talks about the playhead, and most of it talks about the cursor. As I move around here, let's say right here, I knew that about the nine minute mark, there was something that I wanted to work on. I can click on that, and I have a couple options down here. Now, I'm going to show you the hard way. There's keyboard shortcuts for all this, and anyone that's been using it for more than two weeks, learn some of the keyboard shortcuts because it's just simply faster. But I'll do most of them from the interface here. This zoom is similar to this one over here. These allow you to zoom in the screen. If I change this, I can get very zoomed in. I'll do it a little slower there. And there it's zoomed out a little bit so I can see something right about, what did I say? I said it was about the nine minute mark. I'm gonna put that all the way back. This works really well. If the cursor is over here, I'm at roughly the two minute mark then this will keep that cursor right where it was, or right where it is would be a better way to say that, and it will zoom and leave that there. This one is different. This one takes the cursor and says, oh, you want to zoom in? I'll bet you want to see something on each side of that spot. And so when it zooms in, it centers it so that I can see what's before and after the point that I'm interested in looking at. Same with this minus here. So these try to center, these just zoom and leave the cursor wherever it is. But what you'll notice is in the top view, we still have the full 20 minutes showing in the top view. In the big window here, we have, it just depends on how zoomed in we are. We can even change the zoom here. And you can drag this around if I want to see different audio. Now, 
in the demo, the graphics card probably won't keep up because of everything that's going on. You won't see it all move in real time in the bottom window. But when I stop, I now I'm going to be here. I click, and now you'll see where I am. If I move over here, you can see I'm still within this little window here. So this is helpful. If I want to move something and I let go, it shows me that I'm somewhere around 10-minute mark with my cursor. Once I click, now I'm at the 16-minute mark. So this up here allows you to drag all the way through your file. Sometimes I want to see these spaces. A lot of times I like to measure that. Hey, there's some room tone there that I can grab. Use that for later. She left, uh, what's that? That looks like about six seconds to me, four seconds. But I can see it up there in the overview. And down here I can change the view in and out in order to see more or less. Now when I'm working, somebody says, well, how do you know this is a click? Because I can see that. There's a click. That's a maybe click. This is definitely a click. And this is probably a click. It actually is a click, but context matters. So some things, even though I can see them, this may not be heard, especially because it's at the end of some sound. This one will definitely be heard. This is in a breath. You can use these tools here to select your audio. You have a whole set of them right here that says, hey, what do you want to select? And this one is going to give us time. So we're going to get full frequency, top to bottom, and we're going to get time. This one allows us to select a subset, just a region here. And this one allows us to take a sliver that's going the other direction. Now, one thing that's not obvious, at the very bottom is our low end. So if I'm going to do uh, Darth Vader, then I would be in the low end of my voice. And then if I'm doing something really high, it would be up here. And it wouldn't be up there where I'm pointing to. It would actually be somewhere down here. But it would be higher than the other. So that what this is showing you, based on intensity, the brighter something is, the louder something is, okay? And really, the louder the sound is would be a better way to state that. So this, I'm in the middle of a breath. This is a breath, I can tell, because I've seen 40,000 of them. And that might be an exaggeration. Maybe I've seen 60,000 of them. I don't even know. Who can count anymore? In your other, in your, in your DAW, you were listening to it, and you heard a click. And the first thing you do is you load it into RX and you go right to that point and you go and you get yourself to the four minute mark because you had heard a click. And then now you know, now you're going to be, remember, when you come in, you're going to be zoomed out and you're going to go, ah, where is it? Well, you look here at the very bottom, here's the timeline. There's four minutes. I'm going to use this. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to get myself close. And then I might say, let's see, I was really at 410 and I can zoom in there. And really I needed to be at 48. I'll click at 48 down here and I'll use this. And I'm, happy, I'm using the up arrow key as well, which does the same exact thing as this. If you hover over it, it'll tell you that. Up arrow, down arrow to zoom in and out. And then I can look around and say, okay, I heard a sound, I heard a sound, and I can isolate it because I can turn on something called looping right here. We enable the loop, and then we can highlight a little range. And then let me highlight a very short range. Now, this isn't going to, it might be too short, and then I'm going to play it. She'd nut, she'd nut, she'd nut, she'd nut, she'd nut. Okay, so I don't know what in the heck she's saying there, but the point is, is that you can highlight any range. And of course, you might do something that's a couple seconds here. Based on how you're zoomed in, you can see this is 4078, 409. I'm not even at two seconds of audio there. There we go. There's two seconds of audio highlight, and it just depends on how zoomed in you are. If I'm zoomed in at this level, I can't see anything. I can't see any. So I, if I, matter of fact, if I'm right here, there's, you know, what am I looking at there? I don't know. But as you zoom in a little more, now I have two seconds of audio across my whole screen, and I can see lots of things. Now, don't think just because you can see it that all those things can be heard, but many of them can. So I have some different tools here for selecting what I want to select, just like a paint program. I can paint that out. And then over on the right, I have a set of tools that I can use against this audio. Now, for something like this, for example, uh, a lot of people would use D-Click, but I would end up using... The uh, spectral repair is what I would use against that. And if I use that and process that, now that's gone. I mean, it's not gone, gone visually. It doesn't need to be. Your goal is not to do this. Let me see. So you're, this is an S probably. I can tell if I look at it. Let's, let's see if I'm right. Never discover the... Never discover. Dis, never... Never discover the... Never discover. So that's an S. And let's say that, oh, it's too sibilant. Well, what I could do is this. Don't do that. I've just taken out all of the audio, and She'd never discover the and, and everybody and their brother is going to be able to hear that one. Control Z is your best friend. But I could do some things to just reduce that a little bit. And the whole idea in audio repair is take this 
and do the least amount of change that you can to get the sound you want. And really just make it a little quieter. 80% of the time is all you need to do. And there's special tools to do that. And I don't have time to go over all the special tools because you, everyone, you're gonna have a different set of tools depending on which edition you have. But note that the standard edition is perfect for virtually all narrators that are editing their own work. If you're going to aspire to edit for others, then that's a different thing. Then you need different tools. But if somebody has a problem, like even though D-Reverb is included in the standard edition, if you have a problem with reverb, fix your room. Don't try to take it out afterward with a tool like this. In an ideal world, you get, you get less clicks and less mouth noise as you mature, but then there are some people who have done every remedy and they still aren't gonna get rid of all of them and then they're gonna come in and they're gonna run the D-Clicker and they're gonna set up D-Click and they're gonna run it against the whole file if they know what they're doing. And don't let anybody tell you that you can't run the D-Clicker against the whole file. I've run thousands of hours and I've listened to every hour of that after it's been run but I do know what I'm doing in terms of setting this up and setting the, the settings, and they're different for each voice. I can't give you my settings and have it work for you. That's something you have to learn over time and you take lessons. There's a lot of free resources online, but they may not always fit you. You may need to work with somebody directly. I mean, I've set up a thousand, well, that's exaggeration. I've set up hundreds of people in terms of they send me their audio. I, I set up their D-clickers and their D-noisers and things like that. But you can learn this too. You need, need to take some time. It's a very deep tool. So we have some tools. Let me tell you the ones that are almost always used when doing narration. You're going to probably use D-click and D-crackle. You're going to use D-noise. You're going to use spectral repair to take out spot uh, repairs, meaning you've got a little click that wasn't taken out by the D-clicker. Because it doesn't take out everything. You're trying to get maybe 80%. And then you're going to use spectral repair. And then the other thing you're going to use is you're going to use the corrective EQ for certain things. And you're going to use the gain control for some things. And that's kind of it. It's corrective EQ, gain, spectral repair, denoise, declick. That's going to be about 80% of what people use. And then the other tools are great. If you really have issues and you have specific issues, then the other tools come in handy. And there's a thing called a module chain that you can get more sophisticated with this and all of them have presets so once you figure out what you need to do this is set at Donnie one it comes with some built-in and I have some people's names down here at the bottom but every person every piece of audio that comes in I set up a preset and that way I can recall it later you don't have to set it up every time once you know what you're doing there's some easy ways to make this thing work quickly and efficiently so those are the tools we'll use. Those are all sitting over here. This scale up here is showing the low sounds to the high sounds. When I have it over on the other view, you'll notice it changes. And that now I just have this single scale, which is showing me the intensity from minus 3 dB. Minus, here's minus 3 dB at the bottom. And it's going to show me my peaks. This is what people are used to using. But this is going to show that any single word. Discover the truth. Discover is what she's saying in there, is made up of some low frequencies and then high frequencies, and then listen to it as I should play a subset, because here's a couple tools you'll really be interested in. At the bottom left here, there are two main tools. One is the normal play. Discover, 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 discover. Yeah, that'll drive you crazy. Then the other one is called the uh, play frequency selection. And it tells you that. I can't always remember what it is. I use it a hundred times. And what that'll do is allow you to select a subset, any subset of your audio, and go and click on this button here. Discover, 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 the, discover, the, discover the truth about it. Discover, the, 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 discover. So you see what it did? You should play with that on your own. Go ahead and draw yourself a little square in here using this time frequency tool and drag it around the screen as you have audio playing and turn on the loop mode. Click on that loop. You can turn that off. When it's white, it's on. And then do the play selection. And what you'll quickly figure out is the voice has some things on the lower end and you'll be surprised that if you get this up at the top here and then if you drag it over to the right so you can see the scale, there is not a lot of information that's up here. There is some information, but there's not a lot meaning there's not a lot of sound. Sister and her husband. 
So did you hear that, that that part of the S that was up there that I was going through? So that was right here. And you can highlight that now. Uh, hold your ears. Okay. There's that. There's that sizzly S. And I have some tools. I could take that out if I wanted to. You learn to recognize it. You find in your other audio. So when you're starting off, a couple hints. And I'm going to close this thing down. When you hear something in your other audio, note the time. Pull it in here. Zoom in and out and see if you can see it. There's some other ways to look at all this audio. Then we have the tools down here and your, your goal is to be able to just select it. When you select it, then you have to figure out, okay, which of these tools over here am I going to use to solve my problem to eliminate that? This is a very deep tool. Don't get frustrated because you don't know it instantly. Some people are not gonna learn enough from this video to help them. It's just not enough. Some people need to have someone walk them through it. That's just life, it's okay. If you don't have a technical background or an audio background, some of it isn't going to be clear. But you know what? In a half hour, an hour, and actually in an hour, I've got people smoking with this thing, doing everything they need to do for narration in terms of finding the little things. And then some people are going to take uh, four hours. And then when you're done, you get that back on every single book that you do because it's going to take out some things for you automatically when we do de-clicking and denoising. And then you can go ahead and spot treat things with a couple tools like this instant process where I just highlight, drag, done, highlight, drag, done, and highlight, drag, done. Okay? So there's some great tools. The more you know, the more you'll be blown away at what you can do without knowing a whole lot about it. But there is a learning curve. No free lunch. And, of course, as always, be sure to join us over in the Facebook group. There's a Facebook group called Groups slash Audio Rescue. And we talk about Rx and everything related to fixing things in audio. Join us there if you have other questions. Let me know how I can help. Share this with other people. If you share it with enough people, I do more videos. If, if I do this subject and nobody cares about it and four people watch it, uh, I'm gonna do something else, okay? So if you like this, be sure to share it in some of the different groups. And I hope this helps you. Give me some feedback, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of other information out there as you get more advanced. And of course, I'll see you on the wires.